The last evening at school arrived. Most people had finished packing and were already heading down to the end of term leaving feast. But Harry had not even started. Harry pulled some crumpled robes out of the very bottom of his trunk to make way for folded ones, and as he did so, noticed a badly wrapped package lying in a corner of it. He could not think what it was doing there. He bent down, pulled it out from underneath his trainers, and examined it. He realized what it was within seconds. Sirius had given it to him just inside the front door of number 12 Grimmauld Place. Use it if you need me, all right? Harry sank down onto his bed and unwrapped the package. Out fell a small, square mirror. It looked old. It was certainly dirty. Harry held the mirror up to his face and saw his own reflection looking back at him. He turned the mirror over. There, on the reverse side, was a scribbled note from Sirius. This is a two-way mirror. I've got the other one of the pair. If you ever need to talk to me, just say my name into it. I'll appear in your mirror, and you'll be able to talk in mine. James and I used to use them when we were in separate detentions. <laughs> Harry's heart began to race. He remembered seeing his dead parents in the mirror of Barisid four years ago. He was going to be able to see Sirius again. Right now, he knew it. <laughs> he looked around the room to make sure that there was nobody else there. The dormitory was quite empty. He looked back at the mirror and raised it in front of his face with trembling hands and said loudly and clearly, Sirius! His breath misted the surface of the glass. He held the mirror even closer, excitement flooding through him. But the eyes blinking back at him through the fog were definitely his own. He wiped the mirror clear again and said, so that every syllable rang clearly through the room, Sirius Black. Nothing happened. The frustrated face looking back at him through the fog was still definitely his own. <laughs> Harry remained quite still for a moment. Let all the mirror back in the trunk where he shattered. He had been convinced for one whole shining minute that he was going to see Sirius. To talk to him. Disappointment was burning in his throat. He got up and started throwing his things pell-mell into the trunk on top of the broken mirror. But then an idea struck him. A better idea than the mirror. A bigger more important idea. How had he never thought of this before? Why had he never thought to ask? He was sprinting out of the dormitory and down the spiral staircase, hitting the walls as he went and barely noticing. He hurtled through the empty common room, through the portrait hall, and off along the corridor, ignoring the fat lady who called after him. The feast is about to start, you know. Y'all cutting it very fine. But Harry had no intention of going to the feast. How could it be that the place was so full of ghosts when you didn't need one? And yet now? Hey! Hey! Nick! Nick! Can I ask you something? Oh, very well. I can't pretend I haven't been expecting it. Nick turned away from the window to look mournfully back at Harry. He won't come back. Who? Oh! Sirius Black. But you did, said Harry angrily. You came back, you died, and you didn't disappear. Wizards can choose to leave an imprint of themselves upon the earth, to walk palely where their living selves once trod. But very few wizards choose that path. Why not? said Harry. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sirius won't care if it's unusual. He'll come back. I know he will. And so strong was his belief 
that Harry actually turned his head to check the door, sure, for a split second that he was going to see Sirius. Pearly white and transparent, but beaming walking through it towards him. He won't come back. He will have gone on. What do you mean, gone on, said Harry quickly. Gone on where? Listen, what happens when you die anyway? Where do you go? Why doesn't everyone come back? Why isn't this place full of ghosts? Why? I cannot answer. But you're dead, aren't you? said Harry exasperatedly. Who can answer better than you? I was afraid of death. I chose to remain behind. Sometimes I wonder whether I ought to have. Well, that is neither here nor there. In fact, I am neither here nor there. I know nothing of the secrets of death, Harry, for I chose my own feeble imitation of life instead. I'm sorry to have not been more help. And he left the room, leaving Harry there, staring blankly at the wall, alone. 